voices rise, all creation cries, singing out in endless hallelujah. From this moment on, join with heaven's song, singing out in endless hallelujah. So now that we know that we've got our Bibles, let's turn to today's reading. It's going to come out of John chapter 11. So you know the book of John. Um, it's one of the four Gospels right after Luke. So go ahead and turn there. And uh, today's message is called Resurrection is Rapture or a Gathering. Now, I'm going to explain to you how all this fits together. I find it interesting in today's world we'll talk the Christians amongst ourselves. This whole rapture word has seemed to be an ugly word for some people, which makes no sense to me at all because we know where that word comes from. And it's a gathering. And of course, we've talked over the last few Sundays where God, God Almighty actually literally gathers us. And you know, if you die, right, if of old age or or if it's your day to actually die a physical death. Guess what? You're going to be gathered. And so I find this interesting because this is a verse from Job, and this is my introductional verse. But this comes from the Old Testament, in fact, one of the oldest books. And it says this in Job 19, 25 and 26. It says, For I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. He shall stand at last on the earth. Amen. Now, here's, here's this part that's interesting. And after my skin is destroyed, I mean, you're, you're dead, right? You're, you, you've died. Yeah. This I know that in my flesh, yeah. I shall see God. Yeah. Now, how awesome, you notice I put a red highlighter there because we're literally going to be before a Jewish king who we relate in every facet because he is spirit and he is flesh. That is my flesh, I shall, shall see God, Amen. whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold him. We will have eyeballs in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll be able to see him and not another. The deceiver will not be there. We will never have to, to hear the counterfeit voice of the devil. It says, how my heart yearns within me. Praise God. This is Job. Oldest, this is the very beginning of time. Now, we're living at the last days, because literally Jesus even said at his time that the last days had started, but we are really at the tail end of things because of the things that we see. God, you know, Israel's been gathered. That's the big identifier. But I love this. Here it says, even years and years and years and years and years ago, how my heart yearns within me. That are you yearning? today to be with Jesus? Or do I want to have uh, next year, I want to make more money than what I've ever made than I did the last year. Um, what's your yearning today? I feel like a, a lot of us who are believers are so busy trying to make it to the next day that we forget <laughs> that when we finally see Him face to face, it's, it's going to be something that, that you can't even describe. It's, it's going to be um, heaven. He is literally not just the door, but He is heaven. And it's because of the love that you'll experience. And, um, and I just thank Him for it. And so I love this piece because this is from the beginning of the time where it says, My heart yearns within me. If you don't have a yearning today from your heart, then you need to go to the heart doctor. And you need to find out what's missing because, it, and I'll tell you what it is, it's the Spirit of God. Because if the Spirit of God, and we all get to a place, I believe, as believers on our, on our, on our um, path to the kingdom, and putting your yes on the table. Because at some point, 
Have we made him Lord of all? Right? All right. John 11, 1 through 4 is about the death of Lazarus. Now, why are we doing this story today? Well, because the 28th by the uh, Hebrew calendar or the Jewish calendar um, has the resurrection as being on a Sunday, which I believe is the 28th, if I've got that right. And um, you know that we're going to have the Seder on the, on the first day of Passover that's coming up on the 22nd. 22nd. And so I tried to kind of go back... And, um, and so there was, a, there was this death of, of flesh that was very, very important because literally this is a, a staple of something that was significant. And, and it's not just another story or another, you know, this wasn't a parable. This really did happen. And this is something that God wanted to leave us with just prior to going to the cross. And so this is where we are today. And it's very important because it's talking about us humans who have flesh and spirit. So it says this, and you'll notice that I've highlighted this, and there's a reason why I, I do what I do. Um, and I love this verse, how it begins. It just says, now a certain man was sick. Could have been anybody, but this says a certain man. Well, who was that? Well, Lazarus was a close friend to Jesus mm -hmm. and a brother to Mary and Martha. This wasn't just anybody, and he healed a lot of sick but this was someone who was near and dear to him. And it says Lazarus is, was his name of Bethany. Now, if you were to walk from Jerusalem to Bethany, that would take about 40 minutes, and we're talking about a two-mile distance. Now, there's probably elevation included in that, but certainly, you know, how long would it take for us to climb up two miles on, on a mountaintop. Well, it'll take, take some, some time. But I wanted to give that to you, and it was important enough because it's actually included in the Word here. So it says this, that this was Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. So it's important because we get the location and we get to understand who was Mary and who was the, the sister Martha. It says it was... And remember, Mary was the one who would sit at Jesus' feet. Remember? And Martha was the busybody, right? She was the one who was really wanting to make sure that all the plates and the silverware was just perfect. And, you know, and then she was kind of getting a little aggravated with her sister because her sister was all about Jesus in the moment and got, you know, caught up in that moment when she was like, I'm just doing all the work here, you know? So, anyways... So there was a lot of personal dialogue that happened with this family. And then it says that the brother was a friend of Jesus. So it says it was, it was that Mary, who, and it's telling you which Mary, who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So it was Mary who had put her yes on the table and was doing an intimate thing of worship by, by breaking the, 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 uh, the oil and wiping his feet with her hair. And that oil was very expensive. Yeah, very. Like an entire year's income. That's believe, right. right. Yes, that's right. It says, Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, who, behold, he whom you love is sick. That's like us dialing up, you know, we need help because I have a family member, someone that I deeply care about that's very close, is sick. And when it's just sick, we're not talking about just a little cold. We're talking about something that is life-threatening. So when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not to death, but for the glory of God. This attack that we had on Israel is for purpose. We have to remember the things that happened today. That feather that fell out of the ceiling. <laughs> you know, me fighting my ring in the garden. All that is for purpose. And we have to trust him, right? He, he leads us on that path. He prepares the way. 
When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So many times things happen, and it's for God's glory. Even the passing of one of his, of, of his saints gives him glory. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Now, I've highlighted that because um, it starts off by saying that he loved them. But if he did, why didn't he like, hey, we've got a state of emergency here. We need your help. We need the doctor and the ambulance to show up on the scene because we've got someone who you love. But what does he what is it, what will we read? It says that he stayed two more days in place where he was. Doesn't that seem kind of strange when you first read that? He already told them what the purpose was. Um, the purpose he well the, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say the purpose was was and we the purpose is obvious because he said it, and he probably said it to some of his disciples. But they didn't understand. They didn't understand a lot of times, did they? But, but the thing is, exactly. And that's the loving God that we have, right? I, I believe a legal death back then, I've heard this. I'm not 100% sure if this is right or wrong or whatever, but I heard Three back minutes. then that four. Oh, you got So you're going to. Oh, yeah, but that's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah the, the, the legal. Uh, so for someone to be legally dead, they need to be dead for four days before. And then you, they know they're dead. Like, there's a legal death mm -hmm. of four days. So he, yeah. he, 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 he had to do this so that yeah, people would be like, oh, yeah. well, he feigned in the grave. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Or was it three days? I don't it know. was three days, and it wasn't, it wasn't four, but it was three days. And here's what's interesting is they actually, it was there's some superstition of the fact that the spirit would hang around that body until you got the three days, and then after the third day, it would end up leaving. Okay. Um, but anyways, but yeah, you're on to something three, there. Three. And uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit between why was it four instead of three. There's there's something that I want to include in that that I feel like kind of... Uh, He's stinking. <laughs> well, that that certainly is part of the problem, right? I mean, when the if trash, you know, it's funny. A lot of people won't take their trash out until it stinks, <laughs> and then they're like, "Oh, we got to take this out." Muslims so. and Jews bury it within twenty four hours. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So if they're waiting three days, that's way out the yeah, side way. of the norm. Yeah. And we're gonna talk. We're gonna come back and talk about even the fact that Jesus waited two more days. But let's keep going. So it says, then after this. He said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? I find this very interesting. Can we not just do what we, you know, it's like there was a, there was a little, not even meaning to be, they're trying to be protective over him, but you got to understand, God leads us into places sometimes for a, for a greater purpose. And, you know, sometimes we kind of kick as we go along, you know, instead of really fully trusting him. But anyways, they're concerned. And Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. If you have a relationship with Jesus, who is the light of the world, you can trust him. And you can take that to the bank. And I like how he says, but if one walks in the night... He stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Have you been awakened today? Isn't it great when you get awakened by God? It's, it's uh, something that you might not entirely embrace, uh, and it's kind of be, it, can, it can be some adjustments needed. But when you look back on it all, man, I tell you, it's so uh, it, it's it's a, a place where where you look back and you're just so thankful. And so it's interesting. He says that he sleeps here. In twelve, it says, "Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get well.'" <laughs> He's like, they just really were not on the same page, right? <laughs> However, Jesus spoke of his death. But they thought that he was speaking about him taking rest and sleep. 
Then Jesus said to them plainly, <laughs> Okay, you knuckleheads, look, he's dead. <laughs> Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. Now notice who the belief needed to happen. He was still trying to get his disciples to just say, Hey, when I say go, go, instead of giving me all this rigmarole, right? Because they saw his miracles and they're saying, Don't go there, they'll stone you. Exactly. They saw everything already. And as you know, because we, we have the Word of God, you know, um, it... it it wasn't just, you know, it, it, it took them a while, and they weren't there yet. And here we're talking that Jesus was literally going to be going to the cross soon, you know. So um, I find this interesting that literally this moment is for his disciples. So I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Here's Thomas. We were talking about that earlier, right? I'm not a doubting Thomas, and I've said that many times. I'm grateful for my name, but he he did the doubting, and, and, and it, it alleviated a lot of other doubters, right? Yeah. All right. So then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we, that we may die with him. <laughs> we're dead. <laughs> I think he was kicking, right? He was just kind of, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's just go all die together. But anyways, all right. That's also a very bold statement. Can I ask well. one yeah, question? Yes, yeah, sure. Why was Thomas called the twin? That's a good question. You would ask me that. Gwen? Oh, Tim. <laughs> twin. Twin. There's a reason, I'm sure. Uh, maybe there was someone that looked a whole lot like Thomas. Well, maybe he was a twin. Yeah, yeah maybe one right. of the, maybe, so. that, maybe that's as well. Mm -hmm. So anyways, in 17, it's titled in the New King James Version, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen? Amen. So it says this in 17, So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Mm. Now look at this. Remember, he stayed two days, right? Mm. And how far was he from Bethany to Jerusalem? Two miles. Two miles, which would usually take... Is what they're saying. It's a, it's a twenty minute fast walk. Well, or it is, but we've got elevation, day. and yeah. from what I understand biblically, that they would normally do a two, a two mile. But anyways, but here's what's interesting. Jesus waited two days, but when he arrived, Lazarus had already been in the grave four days. So what does that tell us? It tells us that even if Jesus had left immediately, Lazarus still would have been dead. For two days by the time he got there <laughs> you know so we read this and we think well why didn't you know that seems so horrible he would just not come directly and well there is reason i believe so it says um you know there's certainly reasons when i, I pay attention to numbers when i read in the word of god because mm -hmm. numbers mean something in scripture and um but let's let's keep going on so it says now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, and this is interesting. He, it, it, they want you to know this information. About two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them during their brother. So when they, he, he ended up walking up to the scene, um, they were really well known, and there was a lot of people on site to see and to support um, the sisters with the loss of their brother. You know, with it being two miles away, you can't help but think a lot of these people probably looked at Jesus and knew about the miracles, and they were thinking it's kind of like a doctor or an ambulance that just got there late. <laughs> they could have saved him, but now you're showing up at the funeral? Are you kidding me? You know, but that's how they probably saw things because they ended up seeing all the miracles that Jesus had done, and I think so because I think when you read the scripture here, you'll you'll, I think it, there's some support there. So here's what's interesting. Remember, Mary was at the feet of Jesus. Well, this is Martha who was the busybody. So Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went out 
to meet him. But Mary was sitting in the house. I find that very interesting. She was what? She likes to sit a lot. Well, she does a lot of sitting. That's true. That's, that's, she does she does a lot of sitting. The word certainly does. supports that. But, you know, I think there was more to that. She's probably um, mad at him. She's yeah. probably, yeah, she, she had that up. intimacy with it him. Was yeah. She was disappointed and so, like what Martha. Sue said. Yeah. She was and it was up. easier for Martha she, because Martha's like, man, I fixed out a full meal for this guy. <laughs> and look at this. Yeah. Yeah, Martha's a confrontational yeah. person. Well, maybe. And Mary's but, more passive aggressive. Right. Uh, possibly. Yeah, that's true. Possibly. Yeah. I don't think you're going to be able to put this one online. <laughs> Oh, I will. I'll have to edit some, but all right, yeah. let's let's keep that in mind. All right, S save me some work. So it says this. So Martha said to Jesus, "Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would have not died." Um, there you go, right? But look, you can't just throw Martha out there like this because look at what is said next by her. But even now, I know whatever you ask of God. God will give to you. Now she exercised that faith. She knew who Jesus was. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Boy, that was a direct message, and how could you mess that up, right? Well, what does she think? Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection and at the last day. Maybe she read that first verse that we read, right, in Job. She, they understood about resurrection. The Spirit of God had been dealing with people. Not the Holy Spirit had been given yet, but literally the Scripture that has been written. It's throughout the Old Testament. But she understood this. Maybe she even heard other things that Jesus had said even up to this point. But she understands that there is going to be a resurrection. But Jesus had something else in mind. And that's, where, that's the message for the day. I literally could wrap that whole message up with that. We know that we're all going to die, but we who read the Word of God also know that those who are still living, when He comes back, will be gathered and they won't die. Amen. So why not desire that? Amen. Why would we? Why would we want it any other way? You know, I, I, you know, it seems like a lot of people go kicking and screaming with this whole thought of, you know, <clears throat> Jesus gathering it up, you know, gathering up His saints, and I, and everyone that I've ever, you know regardless of when they think this is going to happen. If God came, they would all agreeable. They'd be like, yeah, I would be happy about it. <laughs> I'm like, well, thank you, Jesus. Maybe there's something in there. It's like, yeah, who would be happy? You're going to escape death. I mean, my goodness. Well, anyways, but this is in this verse, Jesus is saying something a little bit different than what Martha was picking up. But I do take note that Martha had incredible faith because she just lost her brother. And he and she is literally telling Jesus, she's taken that seed of faith as a mustard seed, and she's asking for a mountain to be moved in her, her very words right here. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. So he was in agreement with what Martha had stated. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this today? Amen. amen. That should be a hearty amen from everybody, amen. right? Amen. 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 Yeah. She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. So she's the only one after Peter to proclaim that directly. Right yes, there. and in that moment, you can see that the Spirit was moving through right. her very words. And, uh, and of course, Jesus loves hearing that because that's, that's the oh, Father that's moving right. within the people. And the pe some people are getting it. Yeah. Getting it. You know, there's no confusion there. Oh, thank you, God. Yeah. So in verse 28, Jesus and death, the last enemy. That is our last enemy is death. So in the verse 28, it says, And when she had said these things, she went her way and then secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. Say your name. If, if you hear his name, yes, Lord, send me. Here I am. We've got to know the true voice, his voice, not the counterfeit one. But it's interesting that Mary, and you know, I think that's really good because 
If you see God showing up in someone else's life, breathe into that. You've got the Spirit of God. Underscore that. Say, hey, you have a lean into the kingdom. I hear it. I hear it. And encourage them. But here she is letting her sister know, hey, he wants to speak to you. As soon, you notice, as soon, immediately, as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town. There must be a lot of people, um, but he had not yet arrived, but was in the place where Martha had met him. Now this is interesting here, because this is his heart, his apple of, of his eye, the Jews. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her saying, She's going to the tomb to weep there. So they're like, this party's moved, so let's, let's go along. So you've got her going to Jesus with everybody in this moment. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet. Saying to him, Lord, if you had been there, been here, my brother would have not died. Now this is Mary who had intimacy with, with her Lord and Savior. And she is being raw with her, with her Savior. And it's important that we stay intimate with Him. Tell Him exactly how you feel in this moment. You know, you need to, you need to have the fear of the Lord, yes, first. But then be real with Him. Tell Him exactly. I mean, He knows but, you know, he desires you for it to come off your mouth. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, notice he sees her weeping. And the Jews who came with her also weeping. He groaned in his spirit and was troubled. That shows you the compassion that he has for us. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept, right? We all know that that's the shortest sentence in the Bible. But what does it say? Man, means everything. He wept. He understood the pain, the suffering of a loved one dying. And, 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 and this was never the original plan. But he was the fix. He is the Savior so that there would be many that would escape a spiritual death. So Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. That says a whole lot, doesn't it? And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? <laughs> Boy, there was a mixed crowd there, wasn't there? Isn't there always a mixed crowd? <laughs> you got some that love you and some that just don't care. But anyways, um, I'm thinking of Jesus. I'm thinking about Mary and Martha. Martha's not there, I guess. But Mary and Jesus, I guess Martha would probably come back eventually. But you got the people who were all weeping for them and for Lazarus. But then you've got the people that are just there to see what God's going to do. And then they're, st and they're still throwing stones you know, at Jesus um, with the lack of faith. That, um, that they had. So Lazarus was raised from the dead in verse 38 is in your word. It says that Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Sound familiar? Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him, so Martha did return. There she is. She's on site. And she's worried <laughs> about something important. <laughs> Mary, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he's been dead four days. Now here's what's interesting to me. When I look at this three days, when you read this and you, you know that Jesus is flesh and spirit and you know Jesus was resurrected on the third day and uh, he lived. And yet, why would it be 
that we have a resurrection happen on four days. Well, to me, this is just me, okay? This is my thought and opinion. I believe it shows order. I believe it shows God's order. Um, we are all children of God. We were made in His image. But yet God, is, we're not on the same level as God Almighty. And, and we'll never will be. And it's by His design and His purpose. And I believe He was resurrected on three to signify that. Three is that agreement, you know. And He was certainly in agreement to go to the cross and to lay his life down and then take it back up again. And here I find it interesting that it's four days. So it's similar, but it's still different. And to me, I look at that as being a rep representation of order. In other words, God, it's like this. It's like me sitting in this chair and I have this position above me. It's there because it's the order. It's the right order of things. Amen? But what if it, it was there uh, one extra day because of the fact that the Jewish people believed that after three days, the spirit and the body and everything, they were definitely dead. So Jesus wanted to make sure yeah. that they he uh, proved to them right. that, okay, he's been dead for four days, and now I'm going to... Right. Rise him from right. the dead. I yeah. agree with right. that. Nobody could dispute it. That's right. I agree with that statement. It, we clearly needed to have, you know, someone that was clearly dead, but God could have come back in, on day five or any other day. But for it to be the very next day from three, I think it speaks to me as in the, author, the authority of it. Um, but I do believe 100% in what you said. Clearly, after three days, because of the superstition that existed out there, that the spirit still hovered around the body, they wanted to have it the extra time so that even for the, those who were had the superstition that the spirit was still dwelling around the body, body, that it would have time to clear. I think so. I agree with every one statement, but the time is there is a stench. <laughs> well, there's that to to think about too. It ha that happens really quickly, though. Yeah, yeah it does. does. If you've ever left a piece of meat out, you know that. Right. Oh yeah. So that is convincing me <laughs> that it's dead. He's dead. Yeah. Right. When you smell something, <laughs> you don't have to. Ask. Yeah, that's true too. That's, that's true. those are all good observations. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So it says Jesus said to her, "Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God?" Mm. He said that to Martha, who was saying, he stinketh. I'm worried. So he was trying to calm her in that so moment. That we can have a great faith in one moment, and sometimes we lose that faith. And, you know, or, or don't, kind of like what Thomas said, let's go die with him. Yeah. Yes. And he didn't die with him. No. Um, so, so it's interesting. There will be times in our lives where our faith are great, and I ask God for the right, the, the, the greatest amount of faith in the right times, <laughs> because that's we really need that. Not that we shouldn't do it all the time, but it, you know we're human, and, and and so she's also human in this. Right. That that's right. But she, you have to remember, she got a direct answer that he would rise again. Yeah. He literally said it directly to her, oh, yeah. and even in this moment, you still see a lack of faith. Right. So, yeah, so and that's the same thing with the disciples. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yet she s believed, she verbally said one thing, right. but when she looked at the physical right. side of things, there was faith. disbelief. Like, how is that going to happen? Right. Exactly. So, all right. Mm -hmm. I like, I love this story because really this, this shows you the humanity of, of, of it all. So, um. And, it, and you know what? This just translates into this rapture, y'all. Either you believe the words are on the page or, or you don't. And uh, you know that God's got the power to do so, and the Word of God is the Word of God. So believe in it. So then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. Notice it says dead man was lying. He wasn't just hanging out. He was dead and he was lying. And Jesus, Jesus lifted up his eyes and said father I thank you so I thank you that you've heard me and I know that you always hear me but because of the people who are standing by I said this that they may believe that you sent me so he's breaking it down for the people so they can understand how this whole miracle is getting ready to happen that he is 
in um, conversation with his father, and his father is giving him the ability to um, to do these very things in resurrecting Lazarus. So it says, the whole thing is for, for belief. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! Was that loud enough? <laughs> he said that with authority, you guys. When you cast a demon away from you, which you have the power to do through the almighty power of, of the Holy Spirit, you don't say it softly. You say it loud with authority. And he wanted the entire crowd to hear it. And he who had died came out. And I find this interesting. What does it say? Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. I see the whole thing with spirits that try to bind us by unforgiveness. And that's stuff that you've got to loosen by the, whole, the power of the Holy Spirit. So death had bound him. But Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Amen. <laughs> Did you know someday it's automatic, but it's a miracle of God. When you take your last breath, loose him and let him go. You will be free. Amen. And that's a miracle, y'all. Oh, man. We are confident then. This is 2 Corinthians 5.8. We are confident then and would much prefer to leave our home in our body and come to our home with the Lord. Amen. Now what does that say? This is just temporary. Mm -hmm. But very important because God will build upon it and we'll be given a glorious body. But the reason I put this in there is it's a segue. So how does all this relate to a rapture? Well... It's the comfort that we have of the resurrection. The comfort of Christ's coming. He will come to you when you take your last breath if you die a physical death here on earth. And He certainly is going to come to you if you're at the very end of it all. It says it in the Word of God. It says this, But I do not want you to be ignorant. What does that mean? You don't, who wants to be ignorant? We're all ignorant on some level, right? But the word of God is what allows us not to be. It says, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Remember, we just read the verse. They've left their body, their spirit. When you leave here, your body's put in the ground until the day that it's collected. But you will be standing before him. And when you stand before him, you will see your, yourself. And it will look like you'll feel... And you'll, you'll see yourself, but your body is here until you get a glorious one. So concerning those who fall asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Now, there's a lot of believers today that still don't have hope. They still think that we're literally going to end up... Um, I mean, look out th you look throughout the entire Word of God, Jesus is means Savior, He's our rescuer, and He's literally been doing it. He's in the rescue business, y'all, and He's been doing it from the very beginning of the time. So why is it that we think that He will fail us here in the end days? Well, it, it's not so. For if we believe, here we go, belief, will you be saved that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with Him those who sleep in Jesus. There's a resurrection there. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. This is the authority, the word of the Lord. That we who are alive, if he comes back and you're still breathing air, and, and remain when our Lord comes, by no means you will, will you proceed those who are asleep. The dead in Christ, who, the, whose bodies have been buried, but their spirits are already in heaven, God's coming back and he will gather those bodies first and those bodies will reach heaven before those who are still living here. But what this verse says is he will be collecting those who are living. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Remember we went through the whole Jewish traditional 
the groom is coming, the groom is coming. And it would get passed along to the bride who was preparing herself. So the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And this is the important part. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. There will be a, a wedding feast of the Lamb. There will be many things to come. But at that point in time, no matter what else is going on, where Jesus is, we will be, it says right here in the, in the Word. Therefore, we are to comfort one another with these words. Now, if there was ever a time to comfort one another, it would be now. <laughs> right now. So don't hesitate in that. Encourage, because the world really needs encouragement, you guys. I talk to a lot of individuals that come into my shop during the week, and they have the thoughtiest clue about a relationship with Jesus. And, uh, and that's what I pray for. And I share, and you can see there is concern that they see in the world today. Everyone can acknowledge the good and the evil that's happening in our world. And um, God's put in their DNA, and they don't even realize it, a desire to find their Father. And it's there. And uh, it only, you know, it's planting seeds. Don't worry about whether or not it materializes on the spot. Um, even with deliverance, don't worry or not whether or not you have someone fall out in the, in the floor. And, and, and I mean, just trust God with us. It's not, it's, it's not you anyways. It's the Holy Spirit that does everything. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but do not hold back in these days in sharing your faith. Amen? Amen? So anyways, this is a scripture that I felt was real near and dear to Jesus. And we need to remember it as we go in uh, to celebration of the actual resurrection for this year is the 28th. And so this was a this was big on the itinerary for Jesus just prior to, to going to the cross and resurrecting. And I love this because this is his way to show mankind that he is one of us, just like us in a lot of ways. I mean, you know, we are spirit and we are flesh, just just like our our Lord and Savior. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, and we'll get ready for the Lord's Supper. Our voices rise, all creation cries, sing out in heaven's hallelujah from this moment on. Join with heaven's soul, sing out in heaven's hallelujah. 